I made a, I, the film that you're showing, Daughter Ride, is the fifth film that I made. So I was making a lot of films. Um, they were experimental. I was very influenced by both um, avant-garde films, international avant-garde films of the 40s, 50s, and 60s, and also very much so by feminism. And when I discovered film, um, I didn't really study film, I discovered it later while I was studying in the sciences. And when I discovered film, I felt that it would give me a voice to speak. And so, I, because of feminism, I was very much driven to try to put on the screen stories that weren't there before. So, coming out of feminism, um, where in the 70s there were consciousness raising groups that women were in, and the whole purpose of the, these groups was to try to separate out what was a political issue from what was a very personal issue, and so, or a private issue that was your own neuroses. <laughs> and so, I wanted to interview a lot of women so that the film wasn't just about my own personal issues, but could speak to the broader issues that a lot of women were experiencing in terms of mothers and daughters. So that's why I conducted all these interviews. And then I um, spent a lot of time reading them and creating these, compo these characters, Maggie and Stephanie, that were composite characters um, from the women I interviewed. Uh, and the voiceover also is yet another character that's also a composite. I think of the films that I make as a way of having a conversation both with myself and with other women out there. Um, and so I feel that I gain something um, because through the process of making the film, I gained a deeper understanding of both myself as a woman, as a daughter, a deeper understanding of my relationship with my mother. But then in the process of showing the film to women all around the world, I also had a conversation with them and I learned a lot about them. Um, so do you want an example? So I showed the film in Taipei, Taiwan. And after the screening, um, there was a cluster of women. They didn't really talk to me, but they all went off into a corner. And the translator told me that uh, women there, it was, it was common for them to be abused to have incest, to be abused by the male members of their family. And they were never allowed to speak about it. So after seeing my film, they all found each other in that room and could have a conversation about it. And so that, to me, is a really powerful uh, action that the film can create. Well, I, I think that most people write their autobiography through taking home movies through taking snapshots of themselves and their families. Um, but usually what people take snapshots of are things that they want to remember and that tend to be very positive. And so it's creating a fiction of ourselves. I grew up in a time when before video, when people could only take movies. And film was so expensive that they were very careful what they shot. And so you would, they would shoot movies of happy events, birthday parties and weddings and um, traveling. Um, they didn't shoot thing, events that were difficult, divorces, funerals. Um, and even now with video, when people can shoot as much as possible, they still shoot things that uh, present a myth of how they want to present themselves to the world, which is part of who they are, but it's not the whole picture of who they are. Do I think it's helped? I mean, I think it's helped, but I come from the United States, where the situation is very different, and I was just thinking about what's happened in Egypt, and how, um, you know, I just heard this, read the statistic that 90% of women in Egypt have been sexually harassed. 
And so I, I think that the situation of women is very different in different countries and that I come from a particular culture and I speak to my culture, which might be larger than the United States. It might be West European culture and North American culture. Um, and there I think feminism has had somewhat of an impact, but I, it really, I don't, you, I can't make general statements. No, I teach at a university, and m many of the films you've programmed I teach. Oh. <laughs> and I actually thought that the selection was, um, uh, was very broad. There's a lot of films that I, uh, I haven't seen, particularly um, films that have to do with women that are, um, you know, uh, in Muslim countries or um, Africa, you know, just there, there are films that I haven't seen that I really want to see. I, I thought it was a wonderful selection <laughs> because it's really trying to, you know, it does send the message that there isn't just one um, way to think about women and one issue, but it's a very complicated and varied uh, um, area that, and so that's why it's a good selection. Hopefully, yes, I brought a disc, yes. I spent the past 10 years working on um, these four pieces, but they're not conventional films. They're interactive narratives that you play on a computer, um, and you can either watch on a computer screen or project with a computer. Um, and they are about two things. Uh, they are about narrative, which is what Dada Write is about also, trying to create a work where the audience has to put the story together instead of it being a very a, a conventional narrative that you absorb. I want the audience to be active and to have them understand that stories are constructed. Um, that's one part of it. And the other part is that together these four pieces are called Queer Feast and they look at lesbian culture in the United States over a number of decades in all of its complexities and, com and contradictions.